Hey guys, my name is Arun and I'm a 3D designer and animator at Anstack. Today we are going to see how we can create a very simple 3D illustration like this using Blender. Don't worry if you don't know what Blender is or if you have never used it before in your life, it's all fine. This video is uh, mainly for absolute beginners and we will take you step by step into each and every process. If you don't have Blender installed in your PC, go to blender.org and download the proper version. Now, before we start creating 3D models and everything, we need to conceptualize an idea and create some mood boards and sketches for our reference. And this process will be explained in detail by my colleague Nitin. So please follow along and I'll join you later. Hi everybody, my name is Nitin. I'm working as a visual designer at Anstack. So today we'd be showing you how to make a 3D illustration. I know. The whole workflow of the process would be me doing the 2D visualization part, making the component, putting it over the mockup just to see what it looks like. And then from there on, I don't, my colleague would be taking it forward and doing the 3D modeling and so on and so forth. We're using Figma and uh, Blender as the tools. We have a dummy mockup here of a food delivery app. So it's, it's pretty basic deal. It's something I cooked up from the internet. So I'm pressing command dot. So yeah, there's our layers panel. So a quick crash course about Figma. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So we, we can see the tools right here. So this would uh, bring up the frames option. You can choose a frame. So as soon as you've kept a frame, you can do all kinds of design on top of it. You can use shape tools like rectangle, circle, or whatever you want. So mostly we'll be working with pen tool or pencil tool. Yep. You can use this for text. So for the 2D visualization, I think that's pretty much you need to know about Figma. Right? So, uh, yeah. And, and you can fill the colors and stroke and give effects like drop shadow, inner shadow, layer blur, background blur on, on this section right here. We're not going into the prototyping part, which is what Figma is mostly used for. So let's just stick around design for the time being. So as you can see, I've, um, I've gathered a couple of references here as a mood board. Seeing these references, you're getting an idea on what we are trying to make at this point of time. So, yeah, keeping our color palette in mind, let's just go ahead and doodle something up. I'm using a Wacom one to, you know, digitally sketch things up. If you don't have one, you can use the pen tool and probably, you know, uh, I'll show you the process of drawing with the pen tool. So, yeah, this is something that I've, you know, doodled with the help of my Wacom tablet. So, this would be... Uh, this would be a rough sketch or like an outline so now that you have your rough sketch you can draw on top of it but before just for our clarity we can select all of these together and turn down the opacity a notch probably to 25 percent so it does not get in our way right so yep we have the pen tool here My tool is pretty much straightforward. You can just press and hold and drag to adjust the curves. Once you play around with it, you'll get a hang of it. Right. Right. Yep. There goes the top button. We'll give a nice orange-ish color to it for the time being. Yep. 
I just duplicated it holding down the option and dragging looks okay enough now let's go ahead and make the lettuce or whatever you call it yeah let's make them nice and curvy Let's just fill this with a lush green color. We'll get back to our palette later. Since we don't have any particular palette to keep in mind we can just play around and look for what suits the best get as creative as we want with it right now we'll go for the patty So, yep, there goes our patty. And yeah, we'll place it below these lettuce layers. There you go. Whoops. I think it's. Now that the burger is done, let's just quickly move on to our slurpy cup. Let's take an ellipse. So, yeah, I'll give you an idea of what I have right here. So there's a main circle. Yep. Now let's make another circle. Great. we'd make this a union we plan to make this a union and keep it behind the ellipse layers that we just made so in order to make this rectangle and an ellipse a union select both of these together and uh, click on this icon here it's become a union now and we place it right below the ellipse layers ta-da there it goes now making the cup rectangle we grab him by the handles give it a nice red color and place him behind everything so let's just make the straw which is our final part
giving the pointy edges a little corner radius would make it look more interesting you select all these parts of the burger command G you've grouped it together you select all of these parts holding shift command G that's selected too yeah now that we pull them out now we'll place them in a new frame this cup looks a little out of perspective let's just fix that select all of these together you know yep this looks better now if you ask me exactly So a little bit of detail on this burger we'll add a small cool right now so if you ask me, uh, this looks a little bland now. So uh, one of the ways to make this a little more interesting is we try to make it in 2.5D or add more depth and shadow and whatnot to it. So the ideal way of doing that would be we imagine a light source to be somewhere around here. So the sides facing the light source would obviously be more lit and would have more light bouncing off of it. Let's just use that principle and try to put a gradient to it, right? Now let's just add a radial gradient to it. We pull it over here and then this, we put a darker shade to it. Also, we do the same here just to copy the same color and the properties we can use option command C to copy it option command V to paste it here however we'll adjust it just a little bit I think even here we can Following the similar procedure of adding gradients and inner shadows to the component that we're trying to make here, the final product would look something like this. I'm not running you through the whole process of adding colors and gradients to it for the time sake of this video. However, uh, I'll show you how the inner shadow thing works. So for that, I'll have to drop my video to the other side right so uh, let's just tweak this bottom lattice I'll add an inner shadow here right, I'm, I'm taking off all the shadows I'll add an inner shadow here change to inner shadow I'm going to select a color which is lighter moving it to the side yep it shows like a gentle reflection I've added blur to it adding another inner shadow which shows the darker side I'm selecting the color turning it dark moving it to this side Yep. Blurring it out. Let's just refine the edges. Looks more like it.
yep there you go so let's try placing this I'm grouping this command C pressing K so that it scales without distorting the image yep there you go looks kinda cool if you ask me yep so this would be the 2D visualization from my part uh, my colleague Arun would be taking it forward from here over to you Arun hi again now Nitin has provided us with the reference image in this next section I'm going to explain some of the very basic things about Blender which are necessary for us to move forward this will be a very quick guide so just make sure to follow this part as well so when you first open up Blender you should see a splash screen like this so this splash screen is very useful if you want to quickly browse your recent files and have to open up different types of projects but since this is our first project so this splash screen is not that useful for us so simply click anywhere outside this box so it will disappear one thing I would recommend before starting our work is if you're working on a laptop especially let's go to edit and preferences and go to input and make sure to check this emulate numpad option ticked so if this is not ticked you will face some difficulties uh, as we move along this is applicable only if you are working on a laptop and now you will see three objects in your 3d viewport 3d viewport is just a fancy word for your workspace or if you come from a figma or photoshop background you should uh, be familiar with the concept of artboards or canvases viewport is something similar to that so when you first see this 3d viewport you should see three objects one two and three this one is a camera the second one is a cube and the third one is the light for us to render any 3d scene these three objects are necessary a camera and an object and a light so let's check that out by pressing f12 when you press f12 it will render an image it renders an image from the perspective of this camera using this light this light casts shadows and that will help define the volume of this cube and this camera will capture that image that's how any 3d image is rendered in blender but we are not going to create a cube we have to create a 3d illustration so for that we prefer a very clean canvas so let's delete everything up so that nothing comes in our way to do that press a it will select everything and then just hit delete so now we have clean viewport now let's understand how we can navigate around in this 3d space to understand this better let's add some object into our scene to do that go to add mesh and let's add a cylinder now let's see how we can view this uh, cylinder from different angles in order to do that you have to orbit around the cylinder like this so in order to orbit you need to click and hold the middle mouse button and then uh, move your mouse around to orbit like this you can view this cylinder from the bottom from the top and also from uh, any different angles that you want and the next thing is to pan around like this so in order to pan you need to hold the shift key and then click and hold the middle mouse button and drag to left and right up and down uh, whatever you want to pan like this 
and the next thing is zoom in order to zoom you need to press the control key and hold it and then use the middle mouse button to zoom in like this and zoom out like this and alternatively you can use uh, just the wheel mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out if you have any confusion in this just uh, see here on the bottom left hand corner of your screen I have turned on the screencast keys so if I miss to tell something you can just refer here so now let me orbit this by clicking the middle mouse button and also I let me pan this around by holding shift and then middle mouse button and now let me show you how to zoom in by clicking the control key and using the middle mouse button and also wheel up and down okay I hope this is clear uh, this get this takes a lot of time to get used to I recommend spending some time uh, you know just going crazy and navigating around this just use the combination of zoom pan and also the orbit uh, to get yourself accustomed to this navigation process once you know how to navigate around the 3d space like this the next step is to be able to manipulate or transform the 3d objects let's see how we can do that now uh, let's start by adding a cube into our scene uh, let's do this in a different way uh, by using the shortcut key I'll take the shortcut that is shift and a when you press shift plus a the, the add menu pops up and from that you can select the cube okay now we have the cube in our scene uh, let's see how we can make it big how we can make it smaller how we can move this around and also how, how we can rotate it the first thing is moving to move any 3d object in blender you have to press G you can when you press G and just move your mouse you'll be able to move the uh, cube into different places in the scene <coughs> now we have transformed uh, the position of the cube let's uh, also scale it uh, scale it up a little bit that is uh, making it a bit bigger in order to scale up just press S key and uh, when you press S key you can just make it smaller or bigger uh, whatever you want and the next step is to rotate the cube in order to rotate press R when you press R you will be able to rotate this cube let me show everything once again in order to move this you have to press the G key and if you want to make it bigger or smaller uh, you have to press S you can scale it down or up and in order to rotate you have to press R key now it's fairly easier to remember S to scale and R to rotate but uh, G to move seems a bit uh, non-intuitive so I would recommend to do one thing that is to turn on the gizmo uh, to do that just go here there is a symbol of arrow here just press on this gizmos and under object gizmos just check the move box when you do that then you get these three handles red for x-axis Y, uh, green for Y axis and the blue one for Z axis so when you have this you can just easily move uh, the object around the respective axis 
all right <clears throat> now enough of the introduction part let's uh, now really begin our illustration process the first step is modeling uh, okay not that modeling this is called 3d modeling to start building our 3d model we need a reference image uh, which was provided by nitin earlier so let's bring that into our scene just locate that image in your pc and drag and drop it into your scene there you go but right now it's not aligned properly so let's first align that in order to do that just select the image press alt g and alt r it will cancel out any uh, location or rotation changes and it will bring back to its default uh, position uh, right now it's uh, laying flat on the ground we don't need that we need it to be rotated by 90 degrees on the x-axis let's do that now by uh, selecting that pressing r to rotate and x so that it rotates only on the x-axis and then type in 90 now it's uh yeah now it's properly visible also we have to we should be able to see this from the front view in order to uh, build our model uh, better in order to see something from the front view we have to press numpad one when you press that you can see this image from the front view now this image is kind of bright and uh, we might not be able to see the 3d objects that we put in properly so let's reduce the opacity of this image uh, to do that just come here uh, to the object data properties tab click on it and there you can find the opacity option just tick that and reduce the opacity to something like 0.2 okay let's go to front view and analyze our uh, scene or is our illustration so we have two objects one is the burger and one more is the cup let's start with the cup it seems pretty easier to do it has three parts as you can see one is the main cup itself the next one is the cap and a straw so as you can see uh, the main shape of this cup is cylindrical so we can add a cylinder first and uh, edit the shape of this cylinder a bit to create a cup so let's add a cylinder by pressing shift a and cylinder <clears throat> now you can't see your uh, reference image it's behind this cylinder now if you want to still see the uh, image also you have to turn on the x-ray mode in order to turn on the x-ray mode you can go here where it says toggle x-ray turn that on now you can see the border of the cylinder and also uh, the background image uh, now the our cylinder is very big and it's not in the right position so let's reduce the size of the cylinder by pressing s in order to scale it down now the size is okay let's move the cylinder and align it with our reference image let me reduce it a bit more and bring it down okay now we have roughly aligned this cylinder let me toggle the x-ray off and we can see here so we have created a cylinder in order to match the cup the next main thing would be to shape this cylinder in the way of the cup to do that we need to edit this mesh 
right now as you can see we are in the object mode there are different modes if you can open this edit mode sculpt mode and all these modes so we need to go to edit mode when you go to edit mode you can see all these different points and lines so these points are called vertices and there is one more uh, thing called edges so these lines are edges you can move them you can scale them you can even rotate them similarly how you are making how you are uh, moving and scaling the object itself in in object mode similarly when you go to edit mode you can move the in, move individual edges individual vertices and individual uh, faces by doing that you can manipulate the shape of uh, the uh, object a quick way to toggle between object mode and uh, and the edit mode is the tab key when you press tab key it will go to edit mode and when you are in edit mode and then if you press tab key it will come back to object mode okay now let's go back to edit mode by pressing tab and we should go to front view and let me toggle the x-ray back on so that we can properly see faces are not useful for us right now let me go back to vertices let me just select all these vertices by click and drag and i have selected all the vertices let me press s and just scale them a bit scale them down a bit in order to properly match this line and also let me select all these uh, top vertices by clicking and dragging and let me scale this up a bit okay now it's uh, starting to look more like a cup than a cylinder let's go back to front view again and toggle the x-ray and go to edit mode right now we have reached only till half of the cup but we need it to reach till here so we need uh, more uh, more vertices so we need to extrude this vertices to do that press e and bring them till till here and scale them up okay now we already have this cup when you are creating something and you see all this uh, 3d cursor this gizmo this image all these are hindering uh, the main 3d model so these are these things are called overlays you can turn them off by clicking show overlays this button when you turn them off when you turn them off you just see only the 3d model and this gizmo uh, even you can turn this gizmo also off by clicking on this button and when you start editing again just press this and you will get back all these overlays and the schismos this is pretty useful to you know just uh, look back at what you have created uh, until now we are almost done with uh, our cup as you can see our cup is not hollow it's uh, completely solid but since this is not going to be animated or anything it's going to be a still image and uh, we are going to cover it up with this cap so nobody is going to notice let's keep it as it is now you can see uh, this cup is not smooth it's choppy the edges you can see all these individual uh, faces so let's make it smooth by adding a couple of modifiers to this uh, 3d model to add modifiers you have to go to the modifier properties 
tab which looks like a spanner and in that just click on the drop down menu and here let's select bevel the main purpose of this bevel modifier is to add some smoothness to the edges if you can turn it off you will see it better see this edge this is really sharp even even the bottom edge this is also really sharp in reality no object will be this sharp so we need to smooth the edges out so for that we have to add bevel modifier also if you press n n and go to item here you can see the scale is 0.378 this bevel modifier won't work properly if this is uh, anything other than 1 so we need to make it 1 but if we change it to uh, if we change the value here the it will affect the actual model we don't need that we just have to tell blender that this itself is one to do that you have to apply the scale press ctrl a and apply the scale now as you can see it has changed the value to one and the size remains same let's hit n again so uh, so that it collapses that window now we have to adjust this bevel the right now it's very large uh, we can reduce the amount to 0 0.01 and we can increase the segments to 3 if I, if I zoom in you can see it has smooth on the edges a bit and you can also see nice reflection of the light here and but still we see these uh, choppy edges on the side so let's get rid of that now press right click and select the first option shade smooth now as you can see we have a very smooth nice looking cup now that we have our cup ready let's uh, let's start modeling the cap so if i go to front view and analyze the shape of that cap even that looks like a cylinder so we have to create one more cylinder let's do that by pressing shift a mesh and cylinder so once again we can't see our reference image so let's turn on the x-ray now let's move the cylinder to approximate position and let's scale this down a bit by pressing s and scaling it down roughly matching the width of the cup and also right now our cylinder is very very tall let's make it short by pressing s again we don't need the entire cylinder to scale down we just want to make it shorter in the z axis that is the blue line here so in order to do that press s z and then you can easily reduce the height of that uh, cylinder let's do something like this let's bring this a bit up okay if i turn off the x-ray now and let me view this from different angles now it's starting to look like a cap already but as you can see the cap has little details so let's work on that now first thing is the cap has a circle inside this okay let's do that by 
going into edit mode and let's select the face so we need to select this face and press i to insert this face like this let's go somewhere here we need to bring this face a bit up so let's do that by hitting e it will extrude that face and up to around here and as you can see uh, in the reference image that has not gone straight up it's tapering a bit so don't deselect, uh, don't deselect this face with this face selected just press s to scale it down a bit so that we can taper it okay yeah let's hit i one more time to insert this again and this time yeah let's bring it till here so this is going to be uh, a hole uh, to put the straw in okay then press e again this time go downwards so that it looks like a hole okay so one more thing we can do is as you can see in the reference image this shape here even that has some taper so but in our model it's pretty straight so let's do that now let's go to front view by pressing one on our numpad and then go to edit mode now in order to taper them we need one more edge here so let's add that edge by pressing Control R so it will add an edge loop so let's bring it somewhere till till here okay now let's select this bottom edge loop by holding alt and clicking on one of the edges so it will it will select the whole loop let's go back to front view again and scale it up a little bit let's select the top edge loop as well hold alt and click on one of the edges so that it will select the entire loop go back to front view by pressing numpad one and just scale scale it down a little bit now we really have our shape nailed down i have turned on turned off the overlays and also gizmo let's view this model from all different angles it's starting to look like a proper cup now one more thing that we missed here is if you can see the reference image there seems to be a slope here between the inner circle and the outer circle so let's do that now select the gap press tab to go into edit mode and let's select this top edge loop by holding alt and clicking on one of the edges now let's bring that up slightly so it will create that slope <coughs> now our gap is ready but it is facing the same problem as earlier it looks very sharp and we can see all these faces so we have to smoothen it by using the bevel modifier like we did for the uh, main cup let's follow the same process first let us apply the scale by pressing ctrl a and go scale now let's go ahead and apply the bevel modifier so it suddenly uh, changes the shape but don't worry uh, if we adjust some parameters here it will go back to what was it originally here let's change the value to 0 0.01 and let's make it 3 okay 
let's go ahead and right click and shade smooth now the cap is looking smooth now next step is to build this straw let's do that in a very simple way by using curves to add a curve let's press shift a again this time instead of mesh go to curve and select path so you get this line here let's go to front view by pressing one let's reduce the scale of this curve a bit by pressing s and also rotate it by hitting r and 90. let's bring it a bit up and position it roughly now let us turn on the x-ray and see uh, still this line is very long we don't need that much so let's hit yes again and reduce the size a bit now let's adjust the shape of this curve to match the straw to do that let's go to edit mode by pressing tab and even in the curves we can see all these different points so by adjusting them we can uh, manipulate the shape of this curve so let's bring the top uh, point slightly to the right and let's also select all these and bring them to the center and let's bring this a bit up now we want this bend to be a bit sharper so if we want to make something sharper we have to add more points here so let's select these two by dragging and selecting them right click and subdivide so this has become a bit more sharper now but we still want it even more sharper so let's select all these three points again and it's hit subdivide now if you go out of the edit mode you can see this let's turn off the x-ray see this curve here in place properly now the problem is we really can't drink anything out of this kind of straw it needs some volume it has to look like a pipe right so let's do that now in order to do that you have to come here to object data properties that is the icon that looks like a headphone or something so when you go there you scroll down and expand this geometry option in that under bevel you have to increase this depth so just eyeball this and let's make it something like 0.15 yeah now it's fine let's bring this uh, straw a bit up yep perfect now our entire cup is ready let's see how it looks by turning off all the overlays once i feel the height of this cap is a bit too much when you compare it with the reference image so let's reduce that a bit now first let's go to front view by clicking one turn on the x-ray and also let's go to edit mode make sure you, you have turned on this x-ray otherwise when you click these things it won't select whatever is behind this so once in x-ray let's reduce that reduce the height a bit and also let's go to edge mode here and hold alt and click on one of the edges it will select the whole edge loop like like this let's go back to front view 
x-ray and let's reduce the scale and also let's select this edge loop by holding alt and clicking and let's also scale it down slightly now press alt again to come back to object mode and yeah now it feels much much more realistic but the thing is if you turn off all the overlays now there is a gap between our cup and the cap so let's select the cap I hold shift and select the straw as well and just bring them down a bit yep perfect now our cup is truly ready if you turn off all the overlays you can see it now it's time for us to move on to the second object that is the burger itself now let me go to top view by pressing 7 and let me bring my cursor around here and hold shift and right click so that I move my 3D cursor here and if I place any new objects into our scene it will be placed here okay so let's analyze the shape of our burger so this is pretty straightforward to model because this shape and this shape are same this and this are also same so what we can do is we can just model two of them and just duplicate them now for me this looks more like a spherical hemisphere kind of shape let me turn off the x-ray and go back to box select press shift a and add a uv sphere okay press s and scale it down a bit let me move this once so that uh, we can align that with the reference image so as you can see we don't need the entire sphere we just need half of the half of the sphere let me go to edit mode by pressing tab and let's go to vertex select make sure to turn the x-ray on and drag and select all these vertices and just simply hit delete vertices now you get this uh, hemisphere now we have to adjust the shape of this go back to x-ray select select everything bring them a bit down make sure to align the top vertex with the top of the top of the burger and this these vertices the bottom ones with uh, with the reference image properly now we can start adjusting the shape let's go to edge select hold alt and click on one of the edges so it will select the whole loop and go here you can see a point inside a circle it's called proportional editing just select that and press s now you get now you get this circle around your selection if you press wheel up and down you can select uh, the size of that circle if that is smaller it will it will affect only this edge if if you increase the size of that circle it will increase it will start to influence the whole shape we want that circle fairly big and let us adjust the shape like this let's also select this edge loop by holding alt and selecting and let's bring the size down a bit let's also select this edge loop by holding alt and selecting and 
let's increase the scale by pressing s similarly you have to adjust the shape by selecting that edge loop and adjusting its scale i think we don't need this edge loop anymore let's select this edge loop hit delete vertices yeah now we have the shape of that bun let's turn off the x-ray go back to object mode as you can see uh, it has a hollow shape we have to fill it up you can do that by going back to edit mode by pressing tab make sure you have selected the edges here alt and select the loop and then press f to fill fill that gap okay now we have the rough shape of that bun only thing is it doesn't look very smooth it's very choppy so we need to do a couple of things here the bevel modifier won't work in this case so we need to add a different one let's go to modifier properties and scroll down here and select subdivision surface okay now it, it kind of adds more geometry to this let's also right click and shade smooth the top part is looking fine but as you come down here this uh, you can see some weird shapes let's fix that now go back to edit mode and go to face select and select this face this is happening because this face doesn't have enough geometry enough edges or vertices to hold uh, hold this shape together what we have to do is simply press i and bring it down one more time i and bring it down now if you press tab and go back to object mode that is fixed we have our uh, burger shape let's also increase this levels here in the subdivision surface modifier tab to 2 make sure to press ctrl s and save your project once in a while okay so the next thing that uh, we have to create are these uh, green things maybe cheese or a leaf or something i don't know what i'm doing you can easily do that using planes uh, let's go to top view by hitting 7 on the numpad hold shift and right click somewhere on this um, hemisphere and press shift a go to mesh add a plane let me turn on the x-ray let me reduce the scale a bit into something like this okay now let's go to edit mode by pressing tab and let me hit right click and subdivide open this menu increase the number of cuts into something around seven or eight okay hit tab to uh, come to ob object mode again now we have to add a modifier which is subdivision surface to smooth this out let me increase the levels to two and let's go to top view again and hit tab to get into edit mode let me go to vertex select and make sure that this uh, proportional editing is on and now we all we have to do is add some randomness to this uh, perfectly square shape let me press g to move the vertex let's uh, let's move this vertex around
all I'm doing here is selecting some of these vertices and moving them around in order to create that non-uniform shape. That's all. Okay, this looks about right. Let me turn off the X-ray. If I go and refer the reference image, you can see still it has more waves than whatever we have done right now. Let's create more of those waves. It's fairly simple process. All I'm doing is just moving the vertex around. I'm constantly uh, playing around with this uh, circle size as well by using wheel up and down. So that determines the level of influence it has on the other vertices. Okay, this looks fine to me. Now we have adjusted that shape only from the top view. Let's also adjust it from this perspective. Let me take this corner uh, vertices, press G and let me bring that down a bit. Let's bring some of them up. Also this one down, just to add a bit of randomness to the shape. If I'm moving too fast, uh, just refer here. It will show you all the keys that I'm pressing. Okay. Yeah. Now we have that shape. Let's position this properly. Now it's above the uh, bun. Let's bring it somewhere around here. Yep. Just view it from the front view. Yeah, this looks fine. Let's go to top view again. Adjust it like I'm centering it. Right now it's too big. So let's reduce the scale a bit. Yeah. This looks about right. Now, as you might have seen, this cup is, you know, kind of coming in our way. So let's do one thing. Let's select all of its three parts, the cup, the cap, and also the straw and hit M on your keyboard. And it says move to collection. So just create a new collection and say cup. Okay. And here in your outliner, now it has created one more collection called cup. So let's just uncheck this right now. So it will, it will be hidden and we can just, uh, we'll have a clean viewport where only the burger is focused. Let's add some thickness to this. Let me save this first by pressing control S. That was a reminder. Select the shape, go to modifiers and select solidify when you select solidify you can see here it has added a bit of thickness so you can adjust the amount uh, here okay the default value is fine what you can do here is just close this uh, this is the first one is the subdivision surface modifier that we have added to this plane and the second one is the solidify. So if we want the solidify modifier to work properly, we have to bring it above the subdivision surface modifier. So let me bring that above by just dragging. Let me open this up again. Now, if I adjust the thickness, we can add a bit more thickness to this one. Now we are done with all the hard work. Now it's just about, you know, duplicating it and making it look like we have done a lot. Okay. Now we have this top one, top two shapes ready. Uh, in order for us to make that patty, we have to just duplicate this by selecting it and pressing shift D and just press Z in order to snap it to the Z axis and just bring it down a bit like so okay and let's scale it down a bit 
Okay, now we have the first three layers ready. Let's go ahead and get those two more layers as well. We need to select this leaf or uh, the cheese and hit shift D again and also press Z so that it snaps to Z axis and let's bring it somewhere here. Now anybody can make out that we have duplicated these shapes in order to trick all of those people. Let's hit R and Z and rotate it a bit like, like this. Let's go to top view and let me turn on the x-ray and let me adjust the shape a bit. Align it properly to the center. It looks fine now. The only thing remaining is the last layer. For us to do that, we have to duplicate the shape again. Let's go to top view. Shift B to duplicate it. And let's bring it somewhere around here. But it's upside down now. We have to rotate it. So click R and we can type 180. It will invert the shape. And let's just bring it up a little bit. Maybe I have to adjust this shape. It's kind of blocking the view of all the other layers. So let me go to edit mode. Make sure this is turned on. And let me reduce the shape a bit. Just it like this. There's no proper uh, method of doing this. It's all just uh, according to your own taste. Yeah. As you can see, this shape is coming, coming through this one. So we have to avoid any of those things. Let's bring it a bit up. Let's also select the top two layers and bring those a bit up as well. So that a bit of patty is visible. Yeah. Now we have our burger ready as well. Only thing that is left is to add these sesame particles that we'll worry about it later. Never say never. Let's bring our cup back by uh, selecting it here in the outliner. Just tick this box. Now we have our cup back. Uh, we need to place right now the, they are both overlapping. So we have to position them properly. Select all the layers of this uh, burger. Go to top view by pressing seven and adjust the position a bit. Now we are almost done with our modeling part. Only one thing that we need to add is uh, some ground plane and the background. Apart from that, we are done. So now we don't need this reference image anymore. So let's hide it. Make sure to click on this eye icon and also the camera icon so that it doesn't appear in the final render as well. Okay, now let's add in the plane by pressing shift A, plane. Let's go to front view and bring it roughly around here and press S and increase the scale serves as the ground and as you can see in the front view the the cup is not exactly on the ground so let's select everything by dragging and selecting and make sure to bring it down next step is to add a camera and set its angle so let's press shift a and come down here and add a camera 
if you want to see what the uh, camera's view is, you have to hit zero on your numpad. Right now, camera is looking at this uh, this ground. The cup and the burger are not visible as of now. So let's go to top view and position this camera a bit. You have to place it somewhere around here. And now if you press zero, as you can see, some part of this burger is visible, but still we can only see the plane. In order for us to uh, properly set up this camera, there is a very handy tool which is called walk-in navigation. Make sure to uh, select this camera and go to view and here come down to navigation and scroll down a bit and here you can see two options called as fly navigation and walk navigation. Click on walk navigation. Now you can uh, easily adjust the camera's view and also similarly if you have ever played uh, computer games you must be familiar with these controls A, D and W and S. You can using those A, D and W and S keys you can uh, position the camera and also if you press E it will move up if you press Q it will come down so with the combination of those keys, I'm just positioning uh, my camera a bit better. Yeah, this kind of looks okay to me. Right now our camera view is set to default uh, dimensions, which is 16 is to nine uh, dimension. So I want this render to be in square format. So let's change that now. You have to go here and come down to output properties and in this resolution let's change this to 1080 pixels. Now we have got a perfect square. Let me go back to walk navigation once again. Move forward a bit and frame this artwork properly. I think I'm happy with this, so I will just left click it to confirm. Yeah. Now if I press zero, I'll get, I'll go back to the camera view and it's exactly as we need. As you can see, there is some empty space here in the background. We need to avoid that. So for that, let's select this ground plane and Go to edit mode by hitting tab and select these two edges here and press E to extrude and also hit Z to snap them on the Z axis and bring it a bit up. If you go back to camera view again by pressing zero, now you can see the entire thing is covered. But right now, this kind of looks like a wall. We don't need a wall, we need a smooth background. So let's smoothen these edges. In order to do that, let's first apply the scale by hitting Control A and Scale. And go into Edit Mode. Select these three edges which we want to smooth. And hit Control B to bevel them. And also just move your mouse wheel up a few times so that you get more and more edges. The more edges you get, the smoother it will be. So around 15 is fine. Yeah. Press the tab key again to go back to object mode and right click and shade smooth. And now when you go to the camera view, you can see much more smoother background. Let me turn off all the overlays. Yeah, now you get much more smooth background and the objects are perfectly in focus. With this, we have completed our 3D modeling process. 
but right now as you can see it's all gray scale there is no color no texture nothing so in this next section of the video we will see how we can add uh, colors and textures to our scene now let's create materials for our scene let's select this cup scroll down here and go to material properties and in here you can see it's empty right now we have not assigned any material to this you know, this object in order to make a new material click new here you can just double click and call it red since i'm going to make this cup red color i have named it red so here scroll down you can expand it a bit here where it says base color i'll change the base color to red somewhat like this but as you can see nothing's changed here if you want to see your materials you have to go to viewport shading tab in here when you click on this now you can see uh, the colors let me adjust the color a bit by changing the color here and since i want this cup to be kind of plastic material i'm going to have to change some parameters in here apart from the color let me go to roughness and reduce the roughness a bit more if i make it zero it will be it will be completely reflective but let's not make it zero let's make it somewhere around 0.5 or something yeah now let's move on to the next object that's going to be the cap so even this is going to be a plastic material so let me assign the right material for this first and then change the color so to do that come here and browse the material click the red material now it assigns the red material but we want a different one but if you change the color here it will affect the cup as well as you can see if i change the color here it will affect both the objects we don't want that we want a separate color for this cap so go here and where it says add a new material just click on that now it says red 0.01 let me double click and rename it to gray and now if you change the color here it will only affect the cap let me make it somewhat bluish gray yeah i'm happy with this color really now the straw is white color let's keep it at white but still we have to create a new material click on new let's call it white and let's not touch the color here let's go to roughness and reduce the roughness 2.16 or something okay now the cup part is done now let's adjust the color of the burger let's select this one click on new material let's call it brown and change the color here to somewhat like this and go to roughness and make it completely rough by turning the value to 1 okay now the other uh, bun also should be the same color so let's browse that color here and assign the brown material and let's select this one go to new material make it green let's change the color to somewhat of a green yellowish green color i think that's fine now select the other one and just assign the same material 
make sure to uh, hit control s once in a while to save the project now we have this patty for that also we have to create a new material click uh, and write patty think somewhat of a dark maroon color looks fine for this yeah it's completely up to you i'm just doing everything very quickly so that you just get an idea of how you can change the colors in blender now the only thing that is left to color is the background so let me create a new material call it pg and let me change the color to somewhat of a bluish tint yeah i think this looks pretty good oh all right if you say so if i go to camera view now as you can see the colors look nice now that we have defined the colors and materials for our 3d model we still have one more thing missing in our entire scene that is the lighting similar to the real world even in 3d world light is absolutely necessary uh, in order for us to see the objects in that scene so in this next section we will see how we can add lights in our scene using blender now let's go to our render tab so this is how your final image is going to look like and let's go down to render properties here as you can see the render engine is set to ev let's change that to cycles ev is really good to get fast renders which you want to use in games and something like that but cycles is physically accurate and also uh, in the device section if you have a gpu just change it to gpu compute it will be much faster now we need to add some lighting into our scene let's keep it very simple this time uh, since this is a beginner's guide i will not show you how to add the actual lights in blender instead let us simply use an hdri image and uh, use that as a light if you want to get some really good hdri images for free you have to go to polyhaven uh, hdris you just click on this link and look for brown and yep this one brown photo studio 2 and click on download okay now go back to blender in here go to world properties and in there click on color and environment texture don't worry if everything turns to blue and pink all you have to do is just click on open go here to downloads search for .exr and here you can see brown photo studio 02 just open that image and your scene is lit if you zoom out you can see there is a room or something around your scene blender is using the light information from that photo that hdri image and projecting it onto our uh, 3d models that's why you get this realistic looking lighting now everything looks fine to me let's click on this background and i see here there are some reflections happening let's get rid of that go to material properties and come down here to roughness just increase the roughness to one now it looks uh, perfectly fine turn off all the overlays you can see your final image if this uh, background is bothering you just go here to output properties and under format just check this box which says render region then you will only see your final output here 
Now, if you are happy with everything, it's time to hit the render button. You can either go to render, render image, or you can simply hit the shortcut F12. It might take some time based on the capacity of your PC. Don't worry, as long as these numbers in front of samples are kind of moving, that means your render is uh, progressing fine. Now it has finished rendering. All you have to do is go here to image and save. And just save in whatever the name that you want. and save as image. Here you can select the format, either PNG or all the different ones. I've selected PNG. And if you have the alpha background, that means the transparent background, you have to keep it to RGBA. A stands for alpha. And rest everything is fine. Just hit on save image. Now, if you're facing difficulty rendering this image, if it's taking too long or if your PC is not responding and all that, just go here to render properties and come down here under render where it says max samples, reduce it to a very short number such as 256 and now try to hit F12. Here it is, you got your final render. There is not that much difference. You can get away with it using lower number of samples as well. But for a very highly detailed scene, it might affect. But for a basic setup like this, uh, it doesn't make any difference. So you're good to go. That's it. We have successfully completed our first 3D illustration using Blender. Thank you everyone for joining us till the end and also you can visit andstack.design for all your design requirements be it in terms of product design branding or visual design we would really love to help you out we really hope that this was helpful for you well i guess i'll see you guys around <laughs>